So, a wee bit of local information might be handy here. Uh, is this Puddock's Pond and is this an old mine shaft? Exactly where I'm standing right now. I'll tag it on Google Maps as well to find out so as people can see exactly where I'm standing. So this is obviously the uh, Perrot's Pond. I'm standing kind of uh, so far into the pond itself, uh, but it's getting it gets deeper as you go in. Obviously, this is a bing at the side here. There's a bing here, and then there's a bing on the other side there. Uh, this section here seems to be, uh, I think, all of that gorse bush there sits on probably a part of a bing and then the other side of that bing there's a river so if anybody's got any local information about whether this is actually Puddock's Pond and whether this is actually where the mine shaft is please get in touch and let me know maybe leave a comment in the comment section because this is what I've always known as Puddock's Pond obviously it's all overgrown uh, with vegetation at the moment but there's a bit of the pond, you can just see it just over there. It looks like it's still quite deep. So this is Puddock's Pond from a different angle. Or what I think is Puddock's Pond. Uh, I'm standing on the banking by the the old uh, the old uh, like the old waste bit that comes up here, see it? Goes up the hill. So I don't know if this is where the old mine shaft used to be and whether this is exactly where the Puddock's Pond is. But on, when you look at it on Google Maps, it's quite an old photograph and it looks like it's not as overgrown as this. So I'll, I'll tag that and anybody with any information, that'd be great. So after fallen over. <laughs> uh, I found this little uh, rabbit hole here and it's a good example of what came out of the mines. This is what came out of the mine. Uh, obviously iron ore is what came out of the mines uh, but this is the stuff that they didn't use. Uh, that was uh, just thrown aside the side of the, uh, the mine itself. I don't know what it's called but we call them, I call it a bing uh, but I don't know what the actual substance itself is called so coming across from Puddock's Pond with this bing on this side and uh, another flat section and then another bing on the other side of these gorse bushes this is just about 10 metres from Puddock's Pond and this here is tree covered in moss which I actually thought was quite nice uh, it's actually completely covered in moss it's still alive the tree's still alive it looks like a hawthorn tree but I thought that was quite nice actually like the way it sits there and quite kind of like I suppose gothic looking I quite liked it I'm just going to go through this bit here I'm going to go to the left uh, go to the right and go and see what is up that bit there's a wee bit that you can see through the trees there that you can get up I'm going to go and stand on the top of the banking and or on top of the bing and see what I can see but I'm hoping to find the actual mine shaft if indeed the mine shaft is here and it's not see I, I always thought that Puddock's Pond was the actual mine shaft but I'm, I can't be 100% sure on that so I've walked through a little bit and I just came across this little bit here. It's like a little indentation in the vegetation. It looks like it's all been flattened down. Probably where some deer have been resting overnight. Yeah, another wee bit here where it looks like it's all flattened out. Uh, sometimes the deer at night time, they just take a, a find a wee spot that's quiet and lie down. But as you can see, the burn is down there. It's about, about a, I don't know, about a 
10, 10 metre drop, about 30 feet down to the burn. Uh, and there's a fence along the side there where the burn is. And I reckon at the height that I'm up at the moment, I'm still on a bing. If I was to dig down, I'd probably still find that stuff that the bings are made of. Although I'm not really certain on that. Uh, I think possibly Puddock's Pond is the mine and this burn would have been where they would have pumped the water originally out of the mine into the river and it would have been washed away to keep the mine dry for the miners. Uh, that's what I would think they would have done anyway. I wouldn't have imagined Puddock's Pond being an actual place where they would put the water from the mine to drain away when there's a river right next to it. Somebody said to me that uh, Puddock's Pond is actually a place where the mine, where the water came out of the mine and was stored in Puddock's Pond before it being passed into this river further down. Uh, I don't see that, I wouldn't have seen the point in storing the water unless it was contaminated or something. But if anybody's got any information on that as well, please feel free to message me. Probably the older boys around the area that remember the steelworks that were still here. Uh, I don't know when this, the, the actual mines were closed itself, but uh, if anybody, if anybody's still alive that remembers the mines being open or the mines being exposed from when they were boys, please give me a shout. Okay, so I think I may have found the mine shaft. I'm not 100% sure, but there's a square indentation in the in the in the soil here. Uh, at the side of the bing, right on the side of the bing. I wouldn't imagine they would have put it so close to the bing, but uh, you can see here, it's not a very good example of, but there's a, there's a, there's a, a ditch, like a square, almost square, uh, hole in the ground. That looks like it's, uh, it starts here. I'll try and point it out. It starts here and runs all the way around here, like that. So that's it there. It's more or less square, I would... I'm going to step into it just to see uh, what it feels like underfoot because I reckon they would have either filled them with water or filled them with soil. This doesn't look like it's filled with water, so I'm going to try it out. Yeah, it's solid underfoot. It looked like it was solid underfoot, but it is mud. It's mud that's underneath the... See, if you look here, obviously, this part here is... Underneath here is bing. So underneath there, you can see, obviously, these parts that makes it makes it a bing. So this, this part is definitely a bing. That's the side of it. But then here, it's just all soil underfoot. In a plastic bowl. Uh, there is some bits of being under there, but so it's mostly just mud under that part. I don't know, man. That's like a foxhole here. Let me go up and have a look at this foxhole. It doesn't look like it's still used anymore. Oh no, it's not a fox hole, that's a rabbit. So there's a rabbit hole in there. Hi, you can see the, the the bing material there where the rabbit's burrowed in. It's never connected to that other rabbit rabbit hole on the other side. So definitely definitely some deer about here, because that is very fresh. Probably within a day. Definitely a day old. Looks like it's still moist. Either that or it froze the last few weeks and now it's just unfreezing because the temperature's rising and it looks fresh. So the top of the bing is quite heavily goss, quite heavy goss up here. I'll try and lift my phone up. As you can see it's goss right across the top from half on there. And then a steep banking down the side. And I just came up this way. But this is as far up as I can get without clambering through the gorse on hands and knees which I don't really want to do to be honest so as you can see coming down the side of a, an old bing isn't the most the greatest thing in the world as in 
you just slide the, the soil doesn't seem to catch so when you're there's obviously soft soil that's accumulated on top of the the bing that all this gorse uses to grow the bing itself underneath isn't isn't allowing the soil to grip so when you're coming down the side of a bing the vegetation just comes away underneath your feet so this is a better view of the side of the bing so you can see uh, the wee flat bits where the deer have been using it maybe some sheep and the river at the bottom uh, the vegetation isn't as dense on this side so it's easier to clamber along it although still still quite slippy partly because it's soaking wet this looks like another fox no, another rabbit burrow in here as you can doesn't look like it's uh, used anymore you would see that the rabbit would be taking fresh my out of there quite regular and fresh poo from its den because they do poo in their den so this segment here is going to be a wildflower uh, area that we're going to plant out uh, that's a bing there there's a bing right there it comes down the side and apparently there was two or three ponds here as well uh, there's one that you can still see through there uh, when I go through in a second and I show you but we've cut some of these old trees down that were covered in moss and clear them away and we're going to make this like a wildflower orchard I think I don't know if that's how you would say it or wildflower field so as in uh, bees and whatnot can use it it's kind of out the way uh, off the beaten path a wee bit uh, so probably won't get very many people down here which would be good for the wildlife uh, around here I'll go around here uh, so part of this used to be a pond also uh, situated at the side of that bing uh, not really sure I know, I know of Puddock's Pond, but I don't know what these ones are called. I don't know if these ones were also referred to as Puddock's Pond. Nice big tree there. Um, so I'll go down in here. This is kind of what the Woodlands Project is all about, really. Uh, it's about allowing people better access to enjoy the woodlands and also uh, rewilding the area. I know that cutting down these hawthorn trees that are all covered in moss probably they would die anyway with the amount of moss that's co they're covered in uh, it doesn't seem like it's rewilding but it will be rewilding in the future once we get done uh, but that the, that through there seems very wet and boggy I think possibly that was a, a pond at one stage as well looks like a wee fox hole in the side of there I think another rabbit hole mind you fox holes are a bit bigger so there's like a kind of a bit that goes through here it's like a banking up one side and then a banking up the other side it's, like a, it's definitely man-made a straight line so God doesn't do things in straight lines so there's a bank in there I don't know if I can, and then it comes down because into a flat bit and it's all boggy and then goes back up that side maybe there was some sort of track here at some point, I don't know but maybe it was a pond like the other one any information on that would be great as also so this bit here that I was just standing at the other side there runs all the way through all the way down and it looks like it drains into the burn so maybe this was some sort of drainage ditch that's been dug to drain the pond or something I don't know I don't really know uh, any information on why this bit's been dug like this would be great that is very interesting looks like some white what is that over there it doesn't look like the general black bingy substance that you get it looks like maybe quartz or something wait there let me go and have a look looks like a fox has been digging this bit out fairly fresh actually might be a fox in here let's see if this is deep Ooh. it's quite sludgy Look at this. This is a uh, this stuff's white in colour rather than black. 
that's interesting. Looks like that looks big enough to be a foxhole. Definitely big enough to be a foxhole, that one. Um, actually, yeah, maybe. Maybe it's a fox. I don't see many rabbit droppings around the entrance. So possibly it's a fox hole. There's another one here. Oh, oh. That smells a bit. There's another hole here, as you can see. It's possibly not big enough to be a fox. Probably a rabbit, actually. I would say a rabbit. And there's another one just up on the banking up here. So there's quite a lot of wildlife. One thing I have noticed is all the deer droppings. There's quite a lot of deer droppings. There's another hole there on the side of the bank and another one up there. So there seems to be quite a lot of wildlife down here. If we make it into a wildflower orchard on the other side of these trees, hopefully there'll be bees and Hey, all sorts of other wildlife can make benefit of this also. I mean, there being rabbits and deer, that's one thing, but you want a variety of wildlife really, don't you? But this bit here, this bit seems to have been dug, like a kind of channel. It seems to be draining in, into, the, into the burn at the bottom there. So that's the Perrox Pond area. Any information? On the Perrox Pond area would be great. I'm completely out of breath now. Climbing through all those trees is quite hard work. Uh, so, if anybody's got any old maps of where the Perrox Pond and the mine shafts and where everything was situated back when the mines were open, any old uh, Glengarnock Ordnance Survey maps or whatever they might be showing the actual locations of where these things were. That would be absolutely amazing if you've got that sort of stuff. But the Woodlands Project is all about helping people access the woodlands easier and allowing them to enjoy the woodlands that we do, like, like we do. I mean, I've been climbing, climbing through these bushes today. I'm not gonna deny, it's been quite fun. It's quite good fun. I mean, Exercise and then just climb through these hot ones. So it's quite good fun, but not everybody is able to access these woodlands the same way that we can. So allowing people better access is one of our key goals. Also rewilding it because a lot of the trees that have been planted here uh, been planted not artificially they have been planted here uh, but a lot of them uh, like the ash trees have got ash die back and whatnot and we need to cut the ash ones that have got ash die back down and uh, maybe like that area over there maybe get some wildflower uh, uh, wildflower plantation in there that'll encourage other forms of wildlife to come and enjoy this area uh, I mean, with it being so close to the back of a council scheme, allows, it's like a, a really unique opportunity to uh, improve upon an area that's already socially deprived. You know, we, we're all volunteers, we don't take a pay for doing this, but we enjoy doing it. It's, it's, for me, it's like a kind of therapy. So, but uh, part of the the, the main goal is to improve the area and improve the wildlife and just in general, in general make it a better area, you know, and some people have vandalised some of the bridges and whatnot that the, the lads have built up here and that's not so great. Uh, if you are one of the young lads involved in that, please don't do that. It's not nice. And the effort that's been put into building those bridges, you know, boys that the lads that did it they were quite devastated about it to be fair uh, I know that when you're young things like that seem inconsequent it don't seem to have uh, much uh, meaning for you but it has a lot of meaning for us and a lot of people use this as a, a ways of getting out and about especially during the lockdown 
the lockdown has a massive impact on people's mental health and people are using the walk as a means of getting out. I suppose that's what it's all about really, isn't it? It's about nature being more accessible to us and us respecting nature. So that's a wee monologue about what we're doing here and I've got mud on my face. I've probably got had mud on my face the whole time I've made that video. <laughs> Great. <laughs>